This is a 2006 Apple Mac Pro desktop computer. I got this machine off eBay in non-working condition for only $34. Um, so yeah, that's a really good deal for any 2006 Mac Pro, or any Mac Pro for that matter. Uh, so yeah, I'm pretty happy with that deal. Now, the issue with the machine when I got it were two things. So for one thing, the case was not in uh, very great shape. Uh, well, it was actually in decent shape, but uh, as you can see here on the bottom, uh, this part of the metal, and it was worse on this side, but I've, it actually was worse, worse on both sides, but I've uh, done my best to bend it back into shape. Of course, it didn't turn out too well, as you can see, but it is much better than it was originally. Um, so yeah, that was one of the issues I, that the machine had. Uh, the other issue was that the machine was not functional. Um, basically it said in the listing that it would chime but no video would be displayed. Now, it was pretty obvious in the listing why this was and uh, I of course knew this was the issue as soon as I saw it. Uh, there was no video card installed in the machine so of course it's not going to display video without a video card so that was kind of stupid in the listing but uh, nonetheless, it actually turned out to be fully functional, so I'm pretty happy about that. Now, there was one more issue with the machine I had. So, um, I was going to make a video on repairing this, but I wasn't feeling well when, when I did it, so I decided just to not make a video. But uh, the issue I had with this machine uh, that I that took a little bit of figuring out to repair was a bad thermal sensor. So basically what would happen was, when the machine was on, uh, the fans would slowly rev up to full speed and just stay there until you shut the machine off or put it into sleep mode. So I found out that uh, by using a temperature monitor in OS X that uh, the Northbridge thermal sensor was bad. So I ended up replacing that. But it, I wasn't exactly sure what the correct part to get for it was. Uh, I originally thought it was an LM35 uh, digital uh, thermal sensor IC. However, it turned out that the thermal sensors in this machine are just simple P NPN transistors. So I had a, a lot of those spare, so I just soldered one in to the original cable that the original thermal sensor was on, and sure enough, it worked perfectly fine. And to get a proper reading on that uh, thermal sensor or transistor, whatever you want to call it, um, I just shoved it in between the fins of the Northbridge heatsink. And I will be showing you that uh, when we take a look inside the machine. But for now, let's just go ahead and give you an overview of it. Uh, so right here on the top, we have the two optical drive bays, one of which is populated by a super drive. It is an IDE drive, of course. This is a 2006 machine. Uh, on the bottom bay here, we do not currently have anything installed. Uh, so on the front I.O. on the machine, we have a power button and power LED there, a headphone port there, two USB 2.0 ports there, a FireWire 400 port, and a FireWire 800 port there. So those are the ports on the front of the machine. Uh, I'll go ahead and turn it around, and I'll go ahead and show you the ports on the back. Alright, so here's the back of the machine. Uh, so as you can see on the top here, we have the uh, AC power input there. Uh, below that, we have the expansion slots, uh, one of which is, of course, populated by a video card now. Now, uh, this is only temporary, at least for now. Um, I was going to install my G NVIDIA GeForce GTX 650 card that was in my uh, custom-built Hackintosh. However, for some reason, the performance in the operating system is very, very bad. I'm not exactly sure why that is, but uh, the card only runs it x8 speeds and I'm assuming that might be the problem but uh, I can't figure out how to make it run at x16 I'm not sure if uh, it's just the old revision of PCI Express in this machine uh, doesn't support running that card at x16 or it could be the uh, low spec CPUs that are in it that are causing that I'm, I'm not exactly sure um, I might be completely wrong on that but um, yeah I'm not exactly sure. Now this card that I have installed now is an AMD Radon HD 6670 graphics card. Now although that one also runs at X8 and is a less powerful card than the GTX 650, it actually provides 
great performance in OS X. I'm not exactly sure what's different between the cards. Uh, they both have, of course, the same PCI Express interface. Uh, this card does have 2 gigs of video memory, which shouldn't make a difference to, with the performance. So, I'm not exactly sure. Now, right below that, we have the specification sticker. Uh, you can see that this is a 2.0 gigahertz, or this machine has dual 2.0 gigahertz, dual core Intel Xeon 5130 processors. Uh, it had four one gigabyte sticks of DDR2 ECC memory. It originally shipped with an ATI Radon X1900 XT graphics card and had a 500 gig hard drive along with a super drive and built-in airport and Bluetooth. So those are the original specifications of this machine. And something interesting to note about that, uh, the base model of this machine that was sold as a stock configuration uh, came with dual 2.16 gigahertz processors. And this model with the dual 2.0 gigahertz processors was actually only available as a built to order configuration. So I'm not exactly sure why someone would have uh, put low spec CPUs in the machine, but nonetheless, that's what they did, and uh, they will be upgraded at some point to uh, quad core Xeon processors. I intend to install the highest end processors that you can put in this machine, which are the Intel Xeon X5365s. Uh, they are quite pricey on eBay, which is why I haven't bought any yet, but I will be doing that very soon. I will also be upgrading the RAM to 32 gigs, which I will make a video about when I get the memory, uh, since DDR2 ECC memory is extremely cheap. So continuing on with the uh, overview of the system, uh, right here we have three USB 2.0 ports, uh, a FireWire 400 port along with a FireWire 800 port, optical audio in and out ports there, uh, audio in and audio out analog ports here, and on the very bottom of the I.O. panel, we have two uh, gigabit ethernet ports. So yeah, that is the overview of the machine. So I'll go ahead and get it open and show the inside. All right, I've just gotten the side panel taken off the machine, so now we can take a look at the inside. Uh, so up at the very top here, we have the four serial ATA connections for hard disks. Um, and these are designed to be used with these little uh, drive caddies that would that you screw a three and a half inch hard drive into and that just slide in up here so you don't have to uh, worry about the uh, SATA cables and plugging those in by yourself uh, you simply just put the drive in and just slide it in and it connects uh, to the connector uh, in the back there but unfortunately um, I only got one of those caddies with this machine and I can't use it because I don't have a three and a half inch to two and a half inch adapter to use my SSD in so as you can see I have my uh, Samsung 850 Evo SSD just mounted up there with some tape which is which works perfectly fine for a temporary setup until I get a two and a half inch to three and a half inch adapter so I can mount it in the uh, proper caddy for the machine so underneath that we have the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth cards right there uh, next to that we have the Southbridge chip and its heatsink on it uh, right here we have the four PCI Express X16 slots now, keep in mind that these slots can't all run at X16 speeds. Uh, there's a utility within OS X that you can use to allocate the bandwidth of your desire to each of the four slots. So, I think you can have a maximum of about 24, 24 lanes, I think, if I'm not mistaken. So, you can have, like, the bottom as an X16 slot for graphics, uh, two or one X8 and two X4s. I think. I'm not exactly sure on that. But uh, I will show you that uh, once we boot up into OS X and I give you a look at the system. Uh, so right under there we have the graphics card. This is an NVIDIA, or not NVIDIA, an AMD Radon HD 60, 6670 uh, graphics card with 2 gigabytes of video memory. Um, oh, and right there we have the uh, clock battery, which is just a standard CR2032. Uh, right under here, we have the, uh, or right there, we have the Northbridge heatsink. Now, this is actually the, the heatsink that had the thermal sensor that was bad. Uh, as you can see, it is plugged in right here. Now, 
Originally, the thermal sensor was mounted like underneath the heat sink, kind of like bonded to it. I guess thermally bonded to it for the best thermal reading possible. But um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to reattach it that way. So I just um, basically just wedged the uh, transistor uh, in between the fins of the heat sink, which I'll try to show you if I can, which hopefully it should be visible from inside the memory bays. But speaking of the memory bays, we have them right here. Uh, this machine contains two uh, memory riser cards, each of which contains four slots that are compatible with DDR2 uh, ECC memory. Uh, I do currently have 12 gigabytes installed. I have uh, the original uh, one gigabyte modules installed down here. Uh, there are four of them, which make four gigs. And then I have two 4 gigabyte modules that I had spare installed up here. And uh, that gives the machine a total of 12 gigs. Now, if you look up there, you can indeed see the uh, Northbridge heatsink. And you can just make out the transistor I um, sandwiched in between the fins. I'll try to zoom in on that. You can see it right up there at the top of the screen there. So, yeah, that is the transistor. And it does actually get uh, a decent thermal reading there. It it uh, I think uh, usually the that heat sink uh, stays at around 60 degrees Celsius, so uh, that is indeed what the uh, uh, transistor reads and the OS detects, so uh, I think it gets a decent reading right there. So over here in, in this little compartment, we have the two uh, massive CPU heat sinks. Uh, like I said, each of these are uh, cooling a uh, Intel Xeon 5130 processor. Each processor runs at 2 GHz and I think has about 4 MB of cache. I will check that if I can when I boot into the OS. Um, but yeah, that is the internals of the machine. So what I'll go ahead and do now is just go ahead and plug it in. And I'll go ahead and give you a demonstration of the machine. So I'll be right back. Alright, I have gotten the machine hooked up to a keyboard monitor and mouse. And I've actually hooked it up to my... Uh, to my main setup because I am actually using this as my main machine now. So uh, I'll just go ahead and power it up. You can hear a chime there. Now keep in mind, since this has a PC graphics card installed, uh, you will not see a boot screen uh, at startup, but once the OS boots, it uh, works perfectly fine. And for some reason, the optical drive tries to eject every time I turn the machine on, so that's what you just heard there. Uh, I, I'm not sure what's causing that, but I think it might be uh, my USB to PS2 keyboard adapter that I'm using for my keyboard. So it should be booting up in the next few seconds here. So let me switch over to my monitor. And as you can see, it is now booted. Now, I am running Mac OS version 10.9.5 on this machine. Uh, that is, of course, Mavericks. And the reason I did that was because uh, I intend to upgrade this machine to 32 gigs of RAM. And um, Mavericks has much better memory management than uh, Mountain Lion does. And if I were to run Mountain Lion on this system, it would make little use of the large amount of memory I would have installed so that is why I installed Mavericks instead but uh, let's just go up here to about this Mac and I'll show you the details of the machine so you can see here that it is detected as a Mac Pro of course it has two 2 gigahertz dual core Intel Xeon processors installed uh, 12 gigs of 667 megahertz DDR2 uh, ECC memory uh, for graphics, like I said, it has an AMD Radon HD 6670 installed, but uh, OS 10 just detects it as uh, a Radon HD 6000 series. Uh, so let's just go ahead into the memory tab. You can see uh, the memory that is currently installed. You can see the two 4 gigabyte modules right there, and um, the four 1 gigabyte modules, giving this machine a total of 12 gigs. Um, so yeah, that is the machine. And it definitely runs pretty well. Uh, let me go into storage here. I'll show you the uh, SSD is fully detected right there. So yeah, that is uh, the machine. So uh, yeah, it works pretty well. So far I haven't had any issues with it. Uh, using it as my main machine. 
and uh, once I upgrade this to 32 gigs of RAM and two quad core Intel Xeon processors, I'll have a really nice machine. So, yeah, uh, that is the uh, Mac Pro uh, early 2006. So, I'll go ahead and shut it down. So that is my early 2006 Mac Pro. Hope you enjoyed this video.